welcome. First of all, welcome. This is Unsolicited Perspectives. I'm Bruce Anthony, your host here to talk about important issues and events that are shaping today's society. Join the conversation and follow us wherever you get the audio podcast. Subscribe to our YouTube page to watch all of the video versions of our podcast. Rate, review, write a comment, like, share, share with your friends, your family, hell, even your enemies. On today's episode, it's the Sibling Happy Hour. I'm here with my sis, Jay Andrea. We're going to be talking about hip-hop news. We're going to be talking about news in the politics, crazy news in the politics, and really crazy news in the politics. But that's enough of the intro. Let's get to the show. What up, sis? What up, brother? I can't call her. I'm just chilling. How you feeling today? You nailed that second take. <laughs> <laughs> hey, ladies and gentlemen, that was the that was the second time I did the intro. We do one take over here, and that first, <laughs> I I got the the mumble mouth, but the second take was all right. I didn't stumble yeah. too much. I'm getting better at that intro. We only do one takes over here. That's what yeah. we. Do. No, we don't. We do. A, we do. We've done more than one take. No, I haven't done multiple takes on the intro before. On the intro, no. But like, I'm talking about just on the show. We've we've had to stop. <laughs> yes. <laughs> come come back, cut some things. Like, no, nah, some takes. So get this, because this news just dropped. Okay. We're talking about hip hop to, to jump off the beginning of the show because there's been a lot of news in hip hop. Right. But this wasn't a topic that we were going to talk about what I'm about to bring up right now because it just happened. Okay. Puffy is being sued. Yes. For not only sexual assault, but sex trafficking by his former romantic partner and artist, Casey. Cassie. Cassie, I don't know. It was mm-hmm. Casey Cassie. Um, and that just happened just now. Of course, he yes. denies the allegations, but she's saying that not only did he, you know, sexually assault her, that he was passing her around. Mm. That's what the sex trafficking charge is. So that's absolutely crazy. That is uh, nuts. Yes. But we've heard hear a lot that. of rumors about Diddy yes. and his sexual proclivities. Mm hmm. Uh, Will Smith is another one we're hearing some news about. Uh, I don't really, you know, we can. Uh, about him and Dwayne Martin. Let, uh, it, yeah, Jada <laughs> said we suing. So, and, you know, Jada, if something had go, gone on, she would have come up with some clever wording for it, like entanglement and things like that, right? Right. About a, the fact that she was like, we suing. That means, okay, this is, this is not true. But there's always been a rumor about him and Dwayne Martin. Yeah, I, I remember I think, that from the '90s. There's always a rumor about you know friend, you know male friends and stuff in Hollywood. There's all you know. Well, like I Eddie mean, Eddie and Arsenio, right? When, but see, Whitney and Robin ended up being true. Whitney and Robin. Whitney Houston and her friend Robin. Robin. Yo, you don't know about that? No. Robin is like, I, I'm pretty sure that I got the name right. And oh, oh, if I have it wrong, there's going to be people on YouTube that are going to comment and pull out how just how wrong I am. I had to make a clarification, a clarification, uh-huh. a correction to a previous statement. Okay. I said anacondas were populating the Evergrades. It's a, actually a Burmese python. Ah, okay. Everybody and their mama came out to correct me on the issue. The first couple of comments that were just like, hey, just to let you know it wasn't anacondas, it was pythons. I was like, oh, thank you. Uh, I'm sorry I messed that up. Yeah. Then there were a whole bunch of people, don't you do any research? I knew about this story. It was a throwaway comment in a larger context about what's going on in, in, in the world. Yeah. I'm sorry that I got that particular snake wrong. It was a, still a big ass snake, but okay. Yeah, I, like, I, hey, I'm about to make some people even matter. Guess what? Okay. What snakes? Is it what? It's snakes. The snakes. That, look, some <laughs> some snakes that wasn't there before uh, is there now. Exactly. And they're ruining the ecosystem. Ruined have so, have ruined the ecosystem. I'm sure there's. A bunch of people that can tell me, well, the head of a python is more shaped like, a, you know, look, is it a snake? Then it's a snake. 
I agree with you, but I also agree with them. Facts <laughs> are important. Facts are facts, important. Facts but are important. And and let's I was not get our I, dander up over snakes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I was appreciative of the initial responses, just like people that listen to the show. By the way, mm-hmm. a quick detour. Thank you for everybody that subscribed. Because yeah. as of the taping on the show, we are over 500 subscribers on our YouTube page, yeah, which is fantastic, we, right? We hit, we hit 500 mark. Yeah, we we blew past. Well, we been blow past. We're over 500. The goal was to hit 500 before the end of the year. Now yeah. there's a new goal. Go out there and tell your mama, your daddy, your brother, your sister, your best friends, your pseudo friends, and your enemies to subscribe to our YouTube page. The new goal is 750 before the end of the year. I think we can do it. I think we could do it. I think I have think, faith. But a lot of people watch the show on YouTube, and a lot of them are like, hey, just to let you know, they were Burmese, or I'm probably Burmese. not in Burmese uh, pythons. And I was yes. like, oh, well, thank you. I didn't know, uh, or I, did, I got it wrong. Uh, yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. Then some other people was like, oh, oh my goodness, how stupid do you have to be? Way smarter than you. Yeah. <laughs> Ways I made I made a mistake. There are worse things, okay? Yeah. Relax. <laughs> All right. All right. So enough of I don't want to get on the the accusations and innuendos yeah. of of Will and Dwayne and Puffy. That is a civil case. It's not a criminal case. Hopefully everything comes out and the truth comes out uh about what happened. But some other hip hop news. Andre 3000 is dropping the album and my two boys are not excited about it. I find that absolutely weird and strange because I am thrilled. And not only is he dropping an album, but I hear it's no bars, all flute. I I don't know if it's all flute. I heard it's an instrumental album. All flute. (laughs) Well, have you seen a little video of him playing some big ass flute? Yes, he's just been walking around the world. Okay, with that flute and like a couple stuff in a knapsack, like a couple of things stuffed in there. You know, I got a couple pairs of drawers, some socks, a few t shirts, (laughs) some drawers, and he's just been traveling the world with that flute and. (laughs) For 10 years, and now he's going to give us an album, and I I don't know what we're going to experience, but I'm, I am excited. Well, you would you would understand why some people who are fans of him and Outkast, Outkast broke up 17 years ago. Outkast mm-hmm. ain't getting back together. They, 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 they parted. I, I always have a hard time saying this word. Can Amicably. you say it for me? Thank you. I can't ever say that word. They parted on good terms. They're cool. Yes. They're still boys. They yes. just creatively want to do different things. And it, this is clear because Andre just posted. He promoted the uh, album yeah, release. They, they brothers. They've been, mm-hmm. they've been together for all time. So they're going to yeah. be cool. But people have been clamoring for Andre 3000 to come out with an album because the last, I'm sure he's done other verses, but the last verse I saw, I heard him spit was Life of the Party on Kanye's album. I didn't listen to the, all the Kanye's albums, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not a Kanye fan anymore, but he did have a couple of songs that were bangers. And Life of the Party was one of them because Andre killed killed his verse in there. And I was like, okay, As people don't does. like change, right? People yeah. don't like change. But I was telling my boys earlier, like, yo, didn't nobody think violins could be put in the hip hop music? And here come, here came Kanye, who did a whole album with a uh, violinist, and all those songs were dope. I was like, give us a chance. But they came up with a with a counter argument, and I had to back off. They said it was still a rap album, and and this is not a rap album. It is not a rap album at it all. Is not a rap so, album. Well, he said he's not really interested in rap because he's kind of evolved past that. And he said, like, if he did a rap album, it would be inauthentic because that's not where his current artistic interests lie. No, it lies with that flute. Do 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 do. I am ex- I'm, even if it's that I'm I'm gonna be I'm gonna be bumping that do 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 do. I will bump that this entire holiday season. Okay, well you can also since it's a holiday season and and we're talking about Andre three thousand. You know we can promote the fact that he's opening up a store named uh, Merit uh, Pyramids, and it's going to be selling clothes and artwork with that basically is uh, his stuff. So that's oh, going to be pretty cool. Very cool. 
I like um, I like when you know entertainers are do more than just entertain. Yeah, yeah. I like when they you know vary their interests. We get some cool stuff out of it. We get some cool clothes, perfumes, uh, lots of different things. Whatever incense. Erica Badu, Erica Badu can get <laughs> get them incense. Which is, you know, some candles or something. I don't know, yeah. but uh, yeah, I like when they uh, bury their interests because then we get the benefit of some dope art. Yeah. So I, I think be anything else beyond anything else, this album is going to be probably some art. So if I mean, you can, it's, it's... if you can appreciate just art for its own sake, then check it out. I'm going to check the album out, of course. I would say you think differently than most people because you're actually an artist. And most people aren't artists, right? right. Most people are consumers. Yeah. And the consumer is just like, don't do anything different. Unless you are uh, push a T, please do something different. Push a T, I, this is off on a tangent, but I can't listen to Push a T talk about no more dope Dylan, trap houses, yeah. No more. I can't. It's been yeah. 20 plus years. And I'm like, look, even if you did sell drugs, it has been close to 30 years now. It's been, it's been a while. You need the to game let it go. has changed. You need to let it go. Yeah. yeah. I mean, every one, you know, a lot of drugs, most of drugs are legal. But, you know, <laughs> yeah, another yeah. thing is people paying through a cash app with things like, you know, do you know what's, <laughs> do you know, do you have all the apps? <laughs> Push a T? <laughs> do you have a website <laughs> do you have a whatsapp number if not it's time for you to let this go because <laughs> you're uh, not on the cutting edge you're not you, nobody's on the corner anymore nobody nobody well no there's still people on the corner this, they, this they. is i guess there's a, a customer that still likes it old school sure yeah, there's sure. still people on the corner. Um, but detouring from illegal activity and going back to Andre 3000 and he's opening up a store, mm -hmm. transitioning to opening up a whole housing community. That's what my yeah. man T.I. did down there in your neck of the woods. Uh, T.I. opened up a housing development in Atlanta. Uh, he celebrated his grand opening yesterday. Uh, it's the first affordable housing complex, uh, his first affordable housing complex, and it's located on the site of a former Kmart that he used to steal out of. <laughs> the development Lovely. features 143 units, this is important, and 25 units for unhoused children. A community center, a garden, a greenhouse, and aims to combat gentrification and provide opportunities for residents of Bankhead. Uh, the neighborhood where Ti grew up. So uh, this is this is like really cool because yes. don't and and that's that's your neck of the woods. We ain't gonna talk about specifically well, where you live. It's but not, it's, well, I say it's not just my neck of the woods. It is my neighborhood. I I do have oh, Bankhead. So oh, yeah, I mean, is Bankhead is is that? Well, how do you divide up Atlanta? Is Bankhead like? Is it a neighborhood? It's a neighborhood. Or is it just a section of the city? No, it's a neighborhood. It's a whole neighborhood. That's yes. a that's a big ass neighborhood then. Yeah, I mean, well, I can't no, it's it's a section of the city. Yeah. Okay, that's I what I thought. That. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a, a section, section of the city. Yes. But anyway, that that I the the thing that I thought was really cool was he turned something that was negative mm -hmm. and turned it into a positive. Uh, it's you really in bad you really in a bad situation when you had to steal out of Kmart because for yes. those, the generation that doesn't understand what Kmart was, Kmart was cheaper than Walmart. Yes. Walmart put Kmart out of business. Not just that. Not only was Kmart the cheapest, you could also pay for your things on layaway. Like you literally, you could just drop $5 a month and yeah, pay for your stuff on layaway. On that's layaway. how we got our school clothes <laughs> that is definitely how we got our school clothes we got we got our uh winter clothes in the spring and our spring clothes in the winter but we got them we got them <laughs> we got them <laughs> but no i it thought was, that was really cool yeah it's very cool i've driven past um the complex as they're you know as they're building it it is up and uh i believe it has tenants already um okay. or people who are already slated to move in 
But um, I think it's interesting that he's doing this to combat gentrification because that is a uh, issue down here in Atlanta right now is uh, gentrification specifically um, its effect on affordable housing. Mm. Uh, we have a very large unhoused population here and a lot of them are children. Mm. Um, so making sure that there are units in there dedicated specifically for unhoused children. I think that's dope. Um, My question is how are they going to clear that with the state? Cause unhoused children can't just be in housed unsupervised. No, I, I'm pretty sure they have parents. Um, <laughs> I mean, they may, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> for that to sound <laughs> <laughs> okay all right all right they're now, not this is orphans funny. they're <laughs> unhoused <laughs> all right yes I, I i okay just the way when i read it it was just like 25 <laughs> units specifically for unhoused children it should have just been families Instead of unhoused children, because when yeah. you read it, it's just like, what are they just going to take kids off the street and put them in this housing? No, <laughs> that, that's, no I can't do that. <laughs> I think this, I think the police will have some questions, right? Unless uh, unless they turn that into um, what do they call it? Group homes? Yeah, no, I I definitely think it's it's families. Okay. Um, but those units are specifically targeting unhoused families with children. Let's give an applause out. We're not going to really clap because it's going to mess no. up the sound. And yeah. and we're not drink champs. Um, <laughs> so now we ain't, we're going to give an applause. But right. give, it, give an applause out there for T.I. out there doing the right thing. Yeah. But he's not the only rapper out here doing the right thing. To finish off the hip hop segment, you sent me something that hits you close to your soul. I, I just don't know how to feel. Okay. I I <laughs> would tell the people what it was. It feels like the end of an era. Mhm. But after winning the lifetime achievement award for his cannabis influence, <laughs> Snoop Do Double Jizzle Dog is giving up smoke. He announced uh today on social media that he, it, after much consideration and conversation with my family, I've decided to give up smoke. Please respect my privacy at this time. No, I will not. I have questions. First one, why? Okay, so this is what I heard. This is what the rumor on the street is. This is not fat checked. This is just street rumor, okay? That he's quitting the smoke, but just going to edibles. Like he's not giving up marijuana or cannabis that he's just going to stop smoking and go to edibles. How would you feel if, if he quit the smoke, but still got high off them edibles? Well, then, yeah, that's fine. I think it's just I, I mean, I just think. <laughs> Why can't he so... turn his life around? He came out with a gospel album. Trying to turn his life around. He how, did. Is that, he how is that turning his life around? Just smoking, just, hey, maybe he decided, hey, maybe he decided a long time ago I was done drinking, and the only thing, the only vice left he had was the, the, the cannabis, and mm -hmm. he just decided, you know what, I gave up liquor. Let me go ahead and give up this weed, but I'm not going to give up the women. I give up the liquor and the weed, but not the women. The only thing that I could... I'm going to bypass your whole statement. The only thing I could... <laughs> I didn't. I don't. I don't. You know. I thought that was funny to to address that issue. I didn't think that you needed to bypass my statement. <laughs> I thought not that was good. Women, not <laughs> <laughs> oh, and now what, I lost my train of thought. You what know? did Bundini? What did Bundini say on Ali when they were talking about doing Muslim uh, the, converting to to Islam? He is was like, I could give up the pork, but the white women, I can't do that. <laughs> Jamie Foxx is a fool in that movie. Yes. Uh, but, but so your yeah, larger point. Okay. okay. If he wants to, you know, switch to, I think it's just, we've seen him with a blunt for so long. Yeah. But this isn't the first time he's given up uh, the smoke. He's given That's it up true. before um, he, when he was coaching, when he was a youth football coach yes. and 
in 2016 when he appeared on Jimmy Kimmel Live. So he's given up. I don't know if that, I don't know how long that was, uh, right. his appearance on Jimmy Kimmel Live. I don't know if like he was a guest spot or something like that. Or, or was he like hosting? Was he in a guest did host he just, or something? Like did he just announce it on the show? Or did I don't he know. just quit for the duration of the time he was on the show? Maybe that's what it was. But he quit. <laughs> he quit. Okay. But I want to know why he had to had to had to talk to his family and then pray on it. That's that's the right. thing that's that's the thing that's killing me. Well, he did say he had to pray on it. He has but you prayer know he hands in the yeah, photo. Yeah, but you did that's on that's, Instagram. That's what black folks do. They 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 sit there and make a, an important decision. They pray on it. And he prayed on it. I just I just want to know because that's <laughs> absolutely true. I just want to know like. Cause we be taking some some shenanigans to God. Like if they, if he, if he really was like, Lord, would you think I should give up smoke? And God's like, I really don't have time for this. Like I just, <laughs> like I really want, I just really want to know, like what kind of shenanigans? God is like, I got, I got wars true. all over the place. I got people dying from different diseases. Young man. Young brother, I, I do not bandwidth. care. Yeah, I don't I have don't the bandwidth care. for this. I don't care, young brother. I gave you free will to make your own choice. <laughs> right. You do what you think is best, and then we'll decide if it was best later on. When but you, leave when you me come out to the upper it. room, right? <laughs> we, 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 a lot of people go to God for. Sorry, all right, this is a detour. A lot of people go to God for dumb reasons. Yes. <laughs> you know, I don't yes. know how many times I asked God to be like, yo, God, just I'd been studying real hard. Just please help me pass this test. <laughs> <laughs> now, have I prayed for snow when I wasn't ready for a test? Oh, yes. And sometimes when prayers are answered. <laughs> every now and then. <laughs> every now and then you wake up, you look outside, there's snow all on the ground. You're like. <laughs> but did you take that extra time to prepare harder for that test? Nope. No, I did not. <laughs> God, God, God sitting up there like I gave you the snow. Right. You ain't use it. You, you sitting up here. Chance. You sitting up here watching House Guest and 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 <laughs> and what was the other movies that we watch all the time? House well, Guest. One, I'm outside. I'm sledding. I'm doing. Yeah. I'm doing everything but hitting them books. I tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> everything under the sun. Before we move on to kind of more serious topics but still not really uh what <laughs> really not really the things that's been going on in politics uh this past week is bananas it's been a hell of a week it, yes. it's, it's just been a week this is thursday yeah. right yeah. everything yeah. that we're talking about happened up to wednesday it was Correct. monday tuesday wednesday all yeah, this crazy three shenanigans three days uh what else do you have to say about snoop doggy dog giving up that smoke and asking for the Lord for guys. <laughs> <laughs> not only that, not only do we bring ridiculous requests, but we also thank him for stuff. And I'll be like, you got help with that. <laughs> like, did he, <laughs> did he help with you win best rap album? <laughs> you know did, what I mean? <laughs> did he help that light really turn green? <laughs> oh, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Like, I don't think <laughs> got a parking spot like <laughs> look at god like we, <laughs> god won't he do it, <laughs> won't he do it? <laughs> I was, I, thank you god i was looking for that pen <laughs> <laughs> lord look up from a sandwich like huh <laughs> No, Ooh. but uh, yeah, I, if this sticks, again, you're right. This is not the first time that he's quit. But if this time. if this sticks and he's given up cannabis, he never said he was giving up cannabis. He said he was going to quit the smoke. Smoke, exactly. Yes. Um, but if it turns out that what he meant was that he's giving up cannabis, I think it's the end of an era. I mean, yeah, but he's also old. And at a certain point in time. He's not that old. Um, I don't have my phone on me right now. I can't do any fat checking. I'm going to say, I'm going to say that he's, uh, in his er, late fifties, early sixties. He's 52. Okay. What's well, completely wrong. Yes. <laughs> so he, is still, <laughs> he ain't a young man, but he ain't he's, an old man. He's not an old man. No. Maybe he decided that he was going to quit smoking because he don't look great at 52. 
he's just got some gray, but he looks fine. Yeah, okay. All that smoking is that smoking isn't good for you. I we can he, all admit that. I think he still looks like himself. <laughs> like I think he still looks like I think he still looks good. I think he still looks good. So I, I mean, know. he he looks like himself because he is himself, but he's just he's but aging. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, just, I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> he doesn't look like an old man. He still looks <laughs> like Snoop Dogg Double G. I hate that expression. He looks like himself because you see, you hear so many people at a funeral or wake saying that he looked like himself. No, they yes. do not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, depending on no. who did the body we talked about this I know. The after our segment uh, we did depending talk on about who it. did the body who did the body they still dead depending on who did the body they <laughs> could look like themselves well I tell you what uh, I tell you who do look like themselves all these republicans that is wilding out <laughs> we go get to that next hey there podcast listeners it's Bruce Anthony here and welcome to another episode of Unsolicited Perspectives today I want to talk to you about something that's been on my mind lately, the importance of staying hydrated and taking care of ourselves, whether it's prioritizing our health and wellness or gearing up for festival seasons or just gearing up for whatever season or time of year. There's one brand that's been my go to for all things hydration, Liquid IV. Speaking of health and wellness, let's dive into how Liquid IV can fuel your well-being. Imagine starting your day off right, feeling refreshed and energized. Liquid IV Hydration Multiplier is the missing piece in your daily routine. With just one stick, you get five essential vitamins and two times faster hydration than water alone. It's perfect for those early mornings, pre-workout boosts, moments when you're just feeling run down, or even after a late night or long flights. I absolutely love how convenient Liquid IV is. The packaging makes it easy to bring with me wherever I go. And let me tell you, it's become vital daily part of my routine. The flavors, (laughs) let me tell you something, they're incredible. From refreshing sea berry and strawberry lemonade to classics like lemon lime and watermelon, there's a flavor for every preference. It's like a burst of hydration with a hint of deliciousness. Picture this. One stick of liquid IV mixed in 16 ounces of water, hydrating you two times faster and more efficient than water alone. And with 12 mouth water and flavors, you'll never get bored with your hydration routine. Plus, liquid IV is packed with five essential vitamins, B3, B5, B6, B12, and of course, vitamin C. It's also made with premium ingredients, non-GMO, free of gluten, dairy, and soy. This is hydration at its finest, but it doesn't stop there. Liquid IV believes that access to clean and abundant water is the foundation of a healthier world. That's why they partner with leading organizations finding innovative solutions to help communities protect both their water and their futures. It's incredible to know that Liquid IV has already donated over 39 million servings in 50 plus countries around the world. They truly walk the talk. Get 20% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code unsolicited at checkout. That's 20% off anything you order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code unsolicited at liquidiv.com. Remember, folks, taking care of ourselves should always be a priority. So why wait? Head over to liquidiv.com, pick your favorite flavors, and experience hydration like never before. Stay refreshed, stay hydrated, and keep rocking those unsolicited perspectives. Politics. Well, there is one good thing that happened today. Okay. A bill was passed to avert the government shutdown yet yes. again. The yes. Senate's pa- the Senate passed a stopgap bill on Wednesday, which was yesterday, uh, November the 15th. Uh, shout out to my friend who was listening, whose birthday was yesterday. She's in her last year of her 30s. But I told her that she's in the first year. She's in her 40th year. Her 40th year starts when she turns yes. 39. Yes, that uh, is correct. So that they they passed a stop gap. Stop, stop gap. Whoo, say that five times fast. Stop that bill on Wednesday to keep the government open, but that's only until January 19th. So we're going to be dealing with this again on January 19th. And, and yeah. this avoids a, a, a shutdown um, 
The bill did not include additional funding for Ukraine, which was requested by the White House and supported by Democrats, but opposed by some Republicans who wanted to divert the money to domestic priorities, which is the southern border, Mm -hmm. which is an issue. The southern border is an issue. Yeah. Um, so everybody's screaming about, you know, this, the southern border is not that big of a deal. It is an issue. How big of it is uh, of it is an issue compared to other things that we got going on? I don't know. I haven't been down there, so yeah. I can't say firsthand. So I'm not going to speak from ignorance. Uh, I can only go by reports and it's conflicting information from all the news agencies. But, you know, Republicans want to put money into that. And I'm not opposed to put money into it in certain programs, maybe not some of the stuff they want to do. But um, uh, the bill also did not address the debt ceiling, which will need to be raised by December 15th to afford a default on the nation's obligations. So Mm -hmm. they just kept the government open. So what they basically did was they asked for an extension on a light bill. Pretty much. Um, (laughs) That's that's what they did. It's like, I just need to keep the lights on so I could put some on it. Right. And I just need a little extension. the key. The key is I'm getting the extension not to pay it, but to put something on it. Put something on it. I'm go. I just need some more time, and then dot dot dot. I can put something on it, and that's essentially what we have told our creditors. Yes. Yep. So we still have an issue coming December fifteenth, and we got another issue coming January nineteenth. And and I'm gonna be real honest. Unless it's another stopgap measure being passed, I don't really see any any real resolution to our budget issues. Um, but that was, you know, that's the, that was a normal situation that happens in politics. Yeah. It's been happening over the last eight to 10 years. This has always been a fight. Yes. Right. But this is ju- just one of those normal things that happen. Business as usual. <laughs> But there were some other things. There was there was a few other things, and one of the things that really tickled my fancy. <laughs> well, it did. It tickled my fancy. Don't do uh, the finger thing. The only don't, people don't twiddle your fingers. <laughs> hey, hey, look, ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching on YouTube, you see me doing this. But those that <laughs> listening to the audio, you don't see it, which means guess what? You need to go to the YouTube and watch it. Uh, but <laughs> Kevin McCarthy possibly, possibly threw an elbow at a rep, Tim Burchett. It now before his ouster, you could say it was a people's elbow. <laughs> <laughs> you could say that. And you know what's crazy? Is these dudes used to be friends. But Tim yeah. Burchett was a part of that Republican eight that voted to kick McCarthy out mm-hmm. of the speakership. And McCarthy's been feeling some type of way. And so McCarthy now <laughs> Tim, Tim said, Tim said he punched me in my in my kidneys. That's what Tim said. What Tim said yeah. Tim said he gave him a kidney shot. But and, and, I don't know if anybody's ever seen Representative Tim Burchett from Tennessee. But he looks like he would lie on somebody punching him in the kidneys. No. Well, you know, one of the issues, one of the reasons why he voted to oust Kevin McCarthy, I remember him saying this. He was on the fence. He mm-hmm. was on the fence. And Kevin McCarthy, when he was, you know, polling everybody to see who's going to vote against him and who's not going to vote against him, went to Tim because they're friends, right? Yeah. They're friends. Mm-hmm. And he was like, hey, man, which way are you going to go? And Tim was like, I don't know. I'm going to have to pray on it because I don't know what I'm going to do. And Tim said his deciding factor came at that very moment because he said Kevin McCarthy kind of scoffed at the fact that he was going to be praying on it, walked away and kind of laughed at that. And he was like, mm. oh, after that, I was like, I'm he did, he lost all my confidence. Yeah. So they didn't had a little bit of a thing since then. Now, Kevin McCarthy, to his credit, denied it said that it's a narrow hallway and that right. he was just walking by. But honestly, Kevin McCarthy be lying. So I don't trust him. I just love how an 
how an elbow to the back became a shot to the kidney became a sucker punch. <laughs> like it just kept, it keeps escalating every time Burchett tells the story. Like he, it wasn't, <laughs> was it an elbow to the back? Or was it a shot to the kidney or was it a sucker punch? Right. Which, it was, it, what was, what happened? I think but couldn't it, got, it be all of it? Couldn't it be all of it? Well, you could hear him say in the, and uh, he was doing an interview. You can hear him say, why'd you elbow me in the back, Kevin? <laughs> <laughs> so, so he Ladies got elbowed in the back. This, These are grown men. Big age. That are politicians <laughs> in the House of Representatives. Supposed to be representing us. <laughs> This Cre- is your representation, ladies bills, and gentlemen. They're creating bills that have laws that, that are being pushed mm-hmm. to be passed and creating policy that affects our life. And they are sitting there, possibly, potentially throwing elbows and they throwing bows. Throw them bows. They throw yeah. them bows in the hallway. Because apparently this is not the first time that this has happened with McCarthy. Yeah, he got some stuff about him. Former rep Adam. Kinzinger, yeah, and his, yeah. in his in his 2023 book Renegade, wrote yeah. about how McCarthy shoulder checked him twice <laughs> after after he began speaking out against former President Donald Trump. So Look. McCarthy McCarthy will throw a shoulder, he'll throw a bow, and um, you just got to watch yourself. Look, well, my thing is, how come ain't nobody checked him? Because you got one time to bump at me. And I'm like, hey, you know, you bumped into me. And if you say, oh, my bad, it was, it was an accident. I'm like, all right, cool. You know, yeah, cool. But you do it a second time. I got to swing on you. Because I got, to throw be- you, I got to throw a bow or something at you. Because everybody in the chamber knows the truth. What's the truth? McCarthy can throw them hands. No, I don't believe McCarthy can throw you, no hands. I bet you he can. <laughs> you don't go around shoulder checking and throwing bows and kidney shots and sucker punches if you don't know in the back of your mind that you could throw down. No, what he has is a security detail. That's true, because both these incidents, I think, he was surrounded by his security detail. Yeah, so that tells me he can't throw no hands, he a punk. He truly can't. He will hit you from behind someone else's back. Yes, it's a lot of people out there to talk real big and bad when they're in the group, but you catch them by themselves in the corner and like, yeah, I heard you was talking all that stuff. They don't want to hear nothing about it. Right. Speaking of which, people out there talking stuff and don't want to get nothing about it going mm-hmm. on. Mm-hmm. My man, Senator Mark Wayne Mullen. <laughs> now, <laughs> y'all might not know who Mark Wayne Mullen is. He's an Oklahoma senator, mm-hmm. owns a plumbing business. You know, he's Republican, worked his way up, became a senator. Has about the country's first name. Mark uh, Mark Wayne? Yeah, that's yes. country. But he's from, well, he's, he's representing Oklahoma. Yeah, one word. Representing Oklahoma. Little known fact that a lot of people don't know. He's a former undefeated MMA fighter. Yes. He's yes, been he having a little back and forth since March with Teamster boss Sean O'Brien. Mm-hmm. Sean O'Brien has accused him of being a fake tough guy. Uh, old, old mean Mark said, hey, we could take it to the streets. We could do it for charity and, and get in a fight. Teamster, Teamster boss Mark was like, you ain't trying to see it. I'll see you whenever. Just so happens that they were in a committee meeting, a Senate committee committed meeting this week. Yes. And when Mark got the chance, he said, hey, man, you was talking all this stuff. I'm paraphrasing, ladies and gentlemen, but I'm taking it to the hood. <laughs> Mark, Mark Wayne was like, hey, man, you was talking all that stuff. Right now, we got air and opportunity right between us. What's up? Sean was like, Hey what man, up? what's up? Let's do this. <laughs> and, and so and so Mark was like, stand your big ass up. And then Sean was like, stand your big ass up. And then Mark stood up and was said, come on, let's go. He was about to take off his wedding band before Bernie, before Uncle Bernie told him, <laughs> hey, let's calm down. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, a senator, a senator representing Oklahoma, a state in the United States of America, challenged a union official 
yes. to a fight yes. on the Senate, not the Senate floor, but in the Senate committed committee meeting. Yes. Uh, that actually happened. Yeah. And it, and I got to be honest, it was the whitest exchange I have ever read. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> uh, that you read. Yes. Okay. That you read. If you saw it, I saw the video of it. If yeah. you see the video, that looked like two dudes that's about that's about the shits. Okay, they, they about it. I got to see the video because reading it, want to do it now, <laughs> mullen ass? Stand your butt up then. <laughs> O'Brien, fourth generation teamster replied, you stand your butt up, big guy. I mean, it's... <laughs> hey, pal. Knock it off, pal. Like, that was it just... Bernie. <laughs> no, Bernie, then Bernie tells them both to zip it. Zip it. That's an old thing if I ever heard it. Hey, y'all yes. zip it. Y'all quit all that hollering and cussing stuff. Zip it up and zip it out. Now, let me tell you about this video. Because the, the, when you read the dialogue, you read the transcript, it does mm-hmm. sound real corny. Okay. And the, and the interaction of it, giving where they are, is super corny. Yes. Right? I will say, oh, mean Mark Wayne, which sounds like a wrestling name, mean Mark Wayne. Yes. <laughs> Mean Mark Wayne coming down the aisle. Mean Mark Wayne was ready for it. He stood up and was about to take off his wedding band and was ready to go. Now, Teamster Sean was talking a big game, Uh but he ain't really, really want to see it. There has been an invitation for a a charity, you know, fight, you know, little MMA fight, Mm -hmm. but O'Brien never really responded to the offer. And personally, look, Mean Mark got to be just a little bit older than me. But I can tell okay. you, he looks like a lumberjack. The dude is, <laughs> he is even in he that is. suit. Yes. Even in that suit. And I'm a big guy. But even in that suit, I was like, mm, I don't know if I want to see him in the streets. Uh, undefeated in his MMA fights, I might leave him alone. And yeah. if he said, stand up, big guy. I'm going to stand up because I'm going to assume that somebody is going to stop us from actually coming to blows because you got to walk around that long desk in the Senate because the Senate is like this big U-shaped desk. He got to right. walk all the way down there, come down some stairs, go to the middle of the floor. Sean got to get up from behind the desk, walk around the desk. Sean got a shorter way to go. <laughs> but being <laughs> Mark got a long way to go. If he still want to fight you after taking that long trip to the middle of the, uh, the, middle of the floor, you're and about to catch and an no asshole. one has stopped him yet. <laughs> Who's going to stop him? Bernie? Nobody. Talking about zip it. Zip Bernie, it. it. But they got into it in a committee meeting in March. And Bernie had to jump in again and be like, yo, y'all need to stop. Because Sean keep throwing little jabs. Because yeah. the back the backstory is mean Mark, <laughs> mean Mark Wayne has a plumbing company. Mm-hmm. And he says that the union, the local union around him used to give him trouble because he wasn't part of a union, used to give him trouble anytime his company got jobs. So he's not against the union. He's just like, hey, we need more control of the union because they're kind of bullies. And then Sean was like, man, you ain't really out here in these streets really pulling yourself up by your bootstraps, right? You not like us. We come from the gutter. We need those jobs. You just out here just living your best life to start a company with money that you already had. You didn't, even, you didn't come from the gutter like we did. You had money, which I don't know if it's true or not, because I don't know Mean Mark's background. But what I do know is Mean Mark is about that business if, if Sean want to take it there. I think Sean might be about it too, because <laughs> in his uh, tweet, he wrote, quote, in reality, just a clown and a fraud saying that of Mullins, of Mullen. You know, I'm black, so I'm going to add the S on the end of his name. It's Mullins. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Quote, always has been, always will be. Quit the tough guy act in these Senate hearings. You know where to find me. Any place, any time, cowboy. Now. (laughs) The cowboy comment. The cowboy ruined it for me like it like it, <laughs> he could have kept it at any place anytime but adding the cowboy make it made it super lame um but but mullen you know he wanted to smoke and he said sir this is a time 
This is a place. You want to run your mouth? We can be two consenting adults and we can fish in here. And, he did. I'm and telling you. That's you watch, real. That's if real. If you watch the video, yeah. me and Mark was real calm with it, saying, hey, look, man, this is what you said. You said these words. You said any time, any place. Mm-hmm. We here now. This a time. This a place. Let's go. <laughs> What's up? And Sean, you say he about it, and I say he talking a whole lot when he not face to face with me and Mark. It feels like a Twitter fingers situation yeah. here. He's so, talking real yeah. bold. You know, that's another Kevin McCarthy type of situation. He got his goons outside. Right. He got his goons outside. So as long as he can get outside to his goons. Then he can get on his X now. <laughs> Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, it's no longer Twitter. It's X. He can get on X. I'm not calling it that. I think I well, said that sh- episodes ago. That I'm yeah, not, you did. Nobody's going to, the only X I know is Malcolm. <laughs> or DM. Okay. Or X, I, or X videos. I don't know what that is. It's a porn site. Ah. Uh, you know what? I should have known that. <laughs> and that's on me. I feel like I walked right into that. <laughs> That's what I, I, found, I found that out when I was doing research on Joe Smith's wife, which, by the way, detour, Cameron and Mace are idiots because <laughs> on their on their podcast, it is what it is. Mace had a surprise for Cameron and brought out Joe Smith's wife to give him a massage. Eesh. Yeah. Yeah. Harlem dudes, man. Harlem dudes be something else. That's all yes. I'm going to say about that. The, the Harlem dudes be something else. But Damn. I'll tell you what they won't do. I bet you they won't talk big and bad to me and Mark, <laughs> me and Mark Wayne. I guarantee you that. <laughs> Damn sure won't. Because I guarantee- any any guy whose dress shirt is just hanging on by the buttons. It's like <laughs> I'm telling you, if you ladies and gentlemen, go out there and watch. If you haven't seen the video, look at the video and you tell me who looks like they want to fight and who looks like they don't want to fight. I know when somebody is selling wolf tickets. Mm-hmm. And my man Sean, and Sean ain't small either. But no. Sean is Sean is different type of big. <laughs> Sean <laughs> Sean is teamster big. Yes. you know, like construction big. Like kind of got muscles, but really it's only because you're doing manual labor all day. Like, yeah. but you drink Budweiser at night, so you like strong and meaty, kind of mm-hmm. like Homer Simpson. <laughs> yes, <laughs> or Fat Tony. You know, it's like you know, or or Fit Fat Tony. Either one. Or Soprano, but, or, or Tony yeah. Soprano, it's, right? It, it's intimidation big. And what it, that means is I come around, I say some big things, you know, I, yeah, hey, do this or blah, 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 blah. And I throw my weight around, but I don't actually ever fight. Because you don't got to fight because everybody is scared. Because everybody's already the, scared because I presence. have intimidation weight. Yes. But you know what? You know who's not scared of intimidation weight? Somebody who can actually fight. Like right. my man, mean Mark Wayne, who is undefeated once again. I don't See, know. I, I gotta don't know. stop you because you keep pronouncing it like it's two names and it's <laughs> not. It's Mark Wayne. <laughs> I, but it's it's mean Mark Wayne. But you, you you put too much space between the Mark and the Wayne. <laughs> It is, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know how else to get you. This is the countryest name I've ever seen. It's Mark Wayne, one word, and I can't. I that has made me laugh ever <laughs> since you ever since you sent me that article. No, ever uh, since I read that article, uh, I've been laughing. I tell you who won't uh, put hands on me, and Mark Wayne. Who? Kevin McCarthy, even if he got that detail, Mark, me and Mark Wayne ain't gonna get no elbow on the back from, no. uh, from Kevin McCarthy. No, <laughs> not at all, not at all. He'll 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 elbow on the back some guy that looks like a turtle, like Tim Burton. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly. What, speaking, oh, that's a great segue. Speaking of turtles or people that look like turtles, okay. Our boy, poor Georgie, George Santos. Oh, boy, yeah. George Santos, it was announced today that he will not seek (laughs) re-election in 2024. (laughs) And I bet you guys are asking, ask yourself, why is he going to try and seek re-election? He had a, you know, he come to Jesus moment. No, that's not what it was. It was a skating ethics report found substantial evidence of criminal activity by him and his campaign. The report released yesterday, Wednesday, November the 15th, 
uh, detailed how Santos allegedly spent his campaign funds on personal expenses, Mm -hmm. which were. Oh, no. Botox. Oh, no. (laughs) Ferragamo shoes. You got to be kidding me. And the kicker. Only fan subscriptions. Oh, my God. (laughs) My man was out there spending. Campaign money on OnlyFans subscriptions. What is that movie where uh, Richard Richard Pryor comes into some money? He should lay low. Brewster's Brewster's Millions. And he should lay low and he just shows up in a Corvette. Okay, no, you're talking about Superman 3. That was Superman. Yeah, when he stole money from his company. And he was just like, what do you do with this extra cent that's left over when you round up? Oh, it just goes into an account. And he decided to take that one extra cent from everybody's paycheck and mm-hmm. throw it into an account. And the next thing you realize he had, it was a couple hundred thousand. Yes. And then the next day at work, they were like, who who would steal that money? Well, whoever it is is long gone. Nobody would show up to work after stealing that money. And here, here Richard Pryor's dumbass come pull in the parking lot with a red Corvette. Not not Prince's red Corvette. No. Uh, but a red Corvette, nevertheless. Yes. Yeah, that's um, what this reminds me of. It's it, with the Botox and the Ferragamo shoes? Yes. <laughs> you look- uh, this is, but this is even after he's facing 23 federal charges, including fraud, money laundering, theft of public funds. It's clear he's been th- he's been stealing public funds, yes, and making false statements to the house. Uh, he's already beaten two expulsions, mm-hmm. but the ethics committee is going to recommend another expulsion. Yes, when they come back from Thanksgiving recess. Yeah, well, I I had said I thought the this last uh, effort to have him expelled was premature. I think that they should have waited for the ethics report to come out. He ain't got to worry about running in 2024. Like, it's not that you won't (laughs) seek re-election. You can't because you will be in jail. Like, you will be in prison. I don't know. Uh, boy, oh boy. But this is definitely a pivot because he has been steadfast in his denial of these charges and um, that he's not going anywhere. He's not resigning. He's going to run again. Like he, he has been steadfast. So the ethics committee report drops and immediately, oh, I'm not running for reelection. Not only that. Not only does he say it's like after much <laughs> prayer and reflection, people bringing God into this again, again, and, and God and God was just like, man, you know what you did, don't, don't you <laughs> right. ain't got to pray to me, <laughs> you know, what you, you got caught, you got caught, you got caught, uh, and and but he still says this is a witch hunt. In one of his tweets, I, can't, I was just looking for the tweet, I can't find the tweet. He goes and rails again, Trumpian, Trumpian like about how it's a witch hunt and this was a Mm -hmm. crooked ethics committee. Meanwhile, it's equal number Democrats and Republicans on this ethics committee. Yes. And they were just like, bruh, like you can't, like you was, (laughs) the thing that got me was, all right, maybe you can get away with a little bit of Botox, right? Yes. Maybe you can get away with buying yourself some Ferragamo shoes because, you know, maybe somehow in campaign finance, it could be a write off because you you have to buy wardrobe. So maybe you can use, you know, that as a write off. Right. But it was the OnlyFans subscriptions. Yeah. Subscriptions. Plural. Plural. That that really threw me for a loop. My man. (laughs) And I don't know if anybody has ever been on OnlyFans. But like an OnlyFans subscription isn't really like that much. Um, I think the most I've seen when I talked to Marilyn Not Monroe, I think the most of them, her VIP one was like twenty or twenty five dollars a month. Mm-hmm. Like they're, they're, in the grand scheme of things, it's less than cable, right? Right. It's right. less than a shirt. But he was doing subscriptions so much so that it was flagged, which means you know it was more than two hundred dollars worth. So, yeah, my man, poor Georgie, but still, you know, he said, yeah, he says he's not going to run for a reelection because he because he can't. And I think this finally does it. He'll be expelled, even though yes. Republicans don't want to lose that vote and they will lose it. 
they will absolutely lose it. It will not be another Republican that that gets that seat. It will be a Democrat if they if they do a special election or if it's appointed by the uh, the New York governor. It mm-hmm. will be a, a Democrat. They yes. are going to lose that seat. But at, at a certain point, you just got to be like, man. Even even my man Mike Johnson, the House Speaker, was like, hey, look, these uh, accusations and ethics committees ruling is. Uh, pretty damning. And uh, we're going to have to do what's best for the country. So you even got the House Speaker saying, hey, look, we're probably going to have to expel him. Yeah. I did. I found I found this that his rather long rambling post. Okay, read it. Read it for the people out there because they they, you know, maybe they find it. Maybe they won't. It says uh, if there was a single ounce of ethics. (laughs) In the ethics committee, they would have not released this biased report. The committee went to extraordinary lengths to smear myself and my legal team about me not being forthcoming. Parenthesis, my legal bills suggest otherwise. No, the lack of you providing the documentation that they requested. (laughs) would suggest you were not forthcoming. He oh, said, man. he goes on to say, it is a disgusting politicized smear that shows the depths of how low our federal government has sunk. Everyone who participated in this grave miscarriage of justice should be ashamed of themselves. He goes on to talk about the debt uh, blah, 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 blah. He says, I've come to expect vitriol like this from political opposition, but not from the hallowed halls of public service. (laughs) I will remain steadfast in fighting for my rights and for defending my name in the face of adversity. I am humbled yet again and reminded that I am human. And I have flaws, but I will not stand by as I'm stoned by those who have flaws themselves. I will continue (laughs) on my mission to serve my constituents until I'm allowed. (laughs) That's not an ad lib. That's literally what he said. That's that is what he said. Because he knows expulsion is coming. Expulsion or imprisonment. Both. Both. And ladies and gentlemen, that's just what happened in the last three days. <laughs> All of that. Just three days. The week's not over. The week not over. But they they about to go on Thanksgiving vacation soon. So nothing else crazy can happen, I don't think. But I may speak entirely too soon. That feels like you just spoke too soon. I know. Something's going to happen tonight. Something's going to happen tonight or early tomorrow morning. But whatever. This is the episode that y'all got. So I hope you enjoyed it. Just to let you guys know that we are off next week for Thanksgiving week. There won't be any shows, but like I said, subscribe to our YouTube page. There is a ton of content on our YouTube page. And also, guess what? what? We have over 40 shows on our Patreon page that's still only $5 and will remain $5 until Tuesday of next week. Black Friday and Cyber Monday. You can join it for $5 a month. You get so many shows. And if you love the sibling happy hour, you're going to love the after hours uncensored because it is us dilly daddling to the utmost extreme. (laughs) Correct. If if you love dilly daddling, oh my God, that's what the after hours uncensored is with a whole lot of cussing. (laughs) That's what it is. So you can get that information at our website unsolicitedperspectives.com also Black Friday we ain't having no sale but buy some merch you can get ready to buy some merch and hand it out to your friends and family for Christmas and Hanukkah and Kwanzaa Christmas Kwanzaa Hanukkah freedom, 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 freedom. Jay yeah freedom, what you want to tell the people out there thanks for freedom, rocking freedom with us over, stays the same. <laughs> and like always thank you for listening thank you for watching until next time, I'll holla. Whew. That was a hell of a show. Thank you for rocking with us here on Unsolicited Perspectives with Bruce Anthony. Now, before you go, don't forget to follow, subscribe, like, 
comment, and share our podcast wherever you're listening or watching it to it. Pass it along to your friends. If you enjoy it, that means the people that you rock will, will enjoy it also. So share the wealth, share the knowledge, share the noise. And for all those people that say, well, I don't have a YouTube. If you have a Gmail account, you have a YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can actually watch our video podcast. But the real party is on our Patreon page. After Hours Uncensored and Talking Straight-ish. After Hours Uncensored is another show with my sister. And once again, the key word there is uncensored. Those are exclusively on our Patreon page. Jump onto our website at unsolicitedperspective.com for all things us. That's where you can get all of our audio, video, our blog blogs and even buy our merch and if you really feel ingenuous and want to help us out you can donate on our donations page donations go strictly to improving our software and hardware so we can keep giving you guys good content that you can clearly listen to and that you can clearly see so any donation would be appreciative most importantly i want to say thank you thank you thank you for listening and watching and supporting us and i'll catch you next time Audi 5000, peace.